It's a new year, a new season, and we are underway. Really dominating fashion here today is going to win. Two, three, four for the final time. Win number one of the season, only just barely. He is going to win here at the Nazareth Speedway. Wins the Emerson Electric 100K. going to be Igor Moretto's going to eke it out. Cup Series champion is Shane Lake in the number 15. Welcome to the NOF SRL. Indy 250 week rolls on here from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and we finally run our first race around this two and a half mile speedway. The Turkey Hill National Series is in town for one of their biggest events of the season. This is the Steak and Shake 250 from the Brickyard in Season 6 of the NOFSRL Turkey Hill National Series. Hello everybody, this is Napa Fan here, and this is race 13 in season number 6 of the NOFSRL Turkey Hill National Series. We are here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, moving this race up to MD250 week for 2021. It used to coincide with the Cup race, which will be in August this year, but we said to move it up and make it part of this great week of events, and we're here on a Monday afternoon. Might not be the best time, but hey, we're still glad you're here, and we hope you enjoy today's event. It's a 20-lap event here. We're alongside Josh Williamson once again. No worry, he starts dead last. I don't think he's going to win today. But, um, <laughs> Josh, we saw what happened last time out at Dover. We only had, essentially, one pass for the lead at that race when Luke Rainey went on the win. This is another place that is a little difficult to make a pass, but not as difficult, but those guys starting up front are going to have the best shot of winning this race. What odds do you give Alja Vernauskas, Declan Willington Turner, and Dennis Stryker possibly going the victory lane here today? I would give it a definite maybe, because it is there is definitely more wiggle room here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway as there is opposed to Dover, because, well, you do have the... Uh, slower turns like you did at Dover, but you have the big longer straightaway, so you have more room to be able to uh, make that uh, overtake before you get to the uh, flat, what is it, nine degree turns here, I think? But uh, I would definitely uh, say that they have a real chance to get up there and get a victory here today. We're going to have to see how it all goes down. Last year, this race went caution-free. There's a very good chance the race could go caution-free again this year as well. Uh, just the nature of this track, but it should be a great race. Fuel window about 12 laps here today, a little bit longer than it was last year, a little bit past halfway, so we don't have this question on whether it'll be a fuel mileage race, only unless, of course, the caution comes out at lap 8. Uh, that'll definitely make things interesting, but... Um Going to be a fun one here today. This is how they line up in the point standings. John Andrews, still the points leader. 335 points towards the championship. I think he may have the largest points lead anyone has had this season at 25 points ahead of Audrey Baranowskis. But Baranowskis starts on the pole today. Noah Clifton is 32 points behind. And then a three-way tie for fourth between Daniel Bouchard, B.B. Ruiz, and Mitchell Collins. They're all 34 points behind. Collins is probably not too happy after what happened yesterday after he failed to qualify for the Indianapolis Stupid. 50. Marty Johnson's in this race as well also failed to qualify. So we got two guys who failed to qualify for the big race in this event here today. So this is their Indy 250. They didn't want it to be, but this is their last event here in Indianapolis and uh, should be interesting to see what they can do. But starting on the pole, the driver who has won the Indianapolis 250 before, her name is Audra Baranowskis and uh, taking that open wheel experience and transitioning it to the stock car, of course she's going to be starting in the 8th position on Saturday for the great race. She starts on the pole here for the Turkey on National Series. She's alongside Joshua Harrison there in row number 1. Harrison has had a pretty solid season, lost a lot of ground at Dover last time out. But uh, good opportunity for him to possibly get his first win of the season. Declan Willington Turner to the inside of Ben Crouch in row number two. Dennis Stryker to the inside of Talladega winner R.J. Bishop in row number three. Justin Zidell and Aiden McCrow make up row four. Then Dustin Davis, who was part of the Fast Nine yesterday in the Indianapolis 250 qualifying session, to the inside of Ian Siegel there in row number five. We have a past IndyCar champion in this race as well, Justin Zidell, looking for his second win of the season here in the Turkey Hill National Series. There you are, at the back of the field. I'll see if we got any other guys who are uh, going to be. Brayden Perez going to be in that Indianapolis 250. Noah Clifton's going to be in that race. Um, 
Oh, there's a couple other guys. I know Roberto Crown Jr. is another one of those guys. Will Parrish going to be in that race? Mitchell Collins failed to qualify. Unfortunately, he's not going to get that opportunity. Uh, Trey Smith going to be in the race. Landon Smith Jr.'s brother. A lot of guys in this race. Uh, Christian Vargas there in the uh, number 62 was also going to be in the Indianapolis 250 as well. So uh, definitely going to be interesting to see what those guys who have already been on this racetrack in the open wheel machines can do. Well, Josh, who do you think is going to win here today in the Steak and Shake 250 at Indianapolis? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to go with the ninth place starter there, Dustin Davis. For Air Gel Motorsports, I believe he's in a good position to work his way up to the front and maybe, barring a bad pit stop, he could be up there to challenge for a race victory here at Indianapolis. He very well could. He's starting in the same position he's going to be starting in on Saturday in the Indy 250. We'll have to see if he can translate the experience here to Saturday and maybe vice versa. Well, the pace car is down. We're underway in the Turkey Hill National Series at the Brickyard Green Flag in the Steak and Shake 250. Lap one, going to easily go to Audra Baranowskis in the 12, and it's no surprise to see her run well here. She is always a fast driver during Indy 250 week in the IndyCar, and uh, she would definitely love to get another Indianapolis race victory under her belt. She's yet to win this season, but she's also going for that points lead. John Anders, I forgot to mention, John Anders also going to be in the Indianapolis 250 on Saturday. He did not get a good qualifying time in this race. He's deep in the field. The way they are currently running, Baranowskis would take the points lead heading into Charlotte on Thursday, so... Should be interesting to see how that all goes down, but top two have split away. Baranowskis and Joshua Harrison trying to close in on the 12. And Harrison looked like he was going to get a good dive there, headed off into turn three. He still might have an opportunity to get around that 12, maybe not this lap, but as we see the the 10 of Dennis Stryker going after Ben Crouch there. Crouch stretching away out of turn number four, but now uh, Stryker might be falling into the clutches of car number eight there, Justin Zidell. Yeah, Justin Zidell here now inside the top five. But Dustin Davis, your pick to win. He's already up four positions as he gets to the inside of Justin Zidell right there. Stephen Colon in the 80. Also going to gain a position, or at least try to, but he can't quite do it. And Dennis Stryker now on Ben Crouch there for third. Now, one thing, and I went back and watched last year's race here, and something that I mentioned in that race was that these stock cars, they work the outside lane way better than the open wheel cars do. And because of that, Lots of times, these uh, double-wide battles, that outside lane driver tends to get the advantage. So why we don't see as much passing in the stock cars here in Indianapolis as we do, but uh, Ben Crouch is going to really go up in the marbles there. Well, you don't really have any marbles yet, but uh, going to go up out of the groove there and lose a few positions. Here comes his teammate Steven Cologne there. That is for the fifth position, or should I say the sixth position. Here comes Roberto Crown Jr., one of these guys who's going to be racing on Saturday in the Indianapolis 250. He's also going to move up to the inside of Ben Crouch, and Ben Crouch kind of stuck in that outside lane. But uh, we're going to see how that all goes down as we got a lot of shuffling Whoa. going on back in here. Declan Wellington Turner might have an issue. Oh, They're three good. wide through the corner. McCrow and Ben Grurich there all in the middle. That could have easily been an accident, but thankfully they kept it together. Yeah, very well could have been. It's very difficult to go three wide there through that second turn and not be involved in an accident, but somehow, some way, they were able to make it through that turn. Thankfully, they did. This is some tight oh, closing. Good oh, boy. trouble right there, and that I think close. they're going to hold on to it. Renan Isip and BB Ruiz almost got into it there through turn number four. Now, the good thing, and I think it's kind of interesting, you definitely can tell that there's a big speed difference between these cars and the open wheel machines. It's probably about yeah. 50 miles per hour slower for these guys through the corners. Mm, roughly. Maybe not that slow. Yeah, it's pretty close, though. Uh, but still, they actually have the ability to save these accidents a lot better than they do in the open wheel machines. And uh, 
You see single file all the way until you get the Declan Wellington Turner there with Ian Siegel. And uh, it, the racing with the stock cars compared to the open wheel machines is just so much different. we got a battle right there as Elijah Gordon moves to the inside of RJ Bishop for the 8th position. And for the lead, Joshua Harrison had a run, couldn't quite hold it off. Now this is EL Racing looking to go back to back in the Turkey Hill National Series. Their driver Luke Rainey, who's also won this Indianapolis 250 before, he... Um, one last time out at Dover. Now Baranowskis looking to go back to back for that team run by Ethan Lewis. Yeah, the 48's going to have a little bit of trouble now with Dennis Stryker having closed in on the back side there. Someone Joshua went Harrison. around down the back stretch. Uh -oh. It was Joey Hightower, but it was at the back of the field, so no caution was necessary. And it looks like John Anders might have gotten caught up in it as well. But they did not throw the yellow out. Hightower with some damage. That's very interesting right there. Well, we remain green here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. I guess it was far enough at the back of the field that they didn't feel the need to throw the caution flag. And we're still racing here at Indianapolis. Audrey Baranowskis stretching away with a pretty hefty lead there over Joshua Harrison. Who has Dennis Stryker and Dustin Davis and behind him. Davis going to take a look at the inside for that third position headed off into one. Dustin Davis now up to third. Yeah, he's looking pretty strong. Both Dustin Davis and Audrey Baranowskis were in that Fast 9 shootout yesterday. They've been uh, very fast throughout the uh, Indy 250 week so far this weekend. Now they're looking pretty sporty here in the Steak and Shake 250. And I am pretty sure the cautions are turned on. But, I mean, there's no reason why they shouldn't be turned on. I don't think I ever turned them off. So, yeah, everyone's still on the lead lap there, and it uh, looks like it might have just been a simple spin down the backstretch, and Hightower's able to get back going there. Tough break there for uh, Joey Hightower as Dennis Stryker goes back to the inside of Dustin Davis there for the third position. Steven Cologne, Justin Zidell, and Roberto Crown Jr. all in the line here. Then you got a little ways back before you get to R.J. Bishop, Elijah Gordon, and Marty Johnson. And Marty Johnson definitely coming into this race with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder for... What happened yesterday is he failed to qualify for the Indy 250. First time he's ever failed to qualify for any race on that fan, but he's been in the Indianapolis 250 the past four years and finally missed out on it, unfortunately. But uh, Marty's sitting inside here, and one thing you're definitely noticing now, the tire wear is coming into play. That's why these guys have not been able to make too many moves, especially up front. Baranowskis has so far gone flag to flag. She's led every lap so far in this Steak and Shake 250. There goes Dustin Davis over the inside of Dennis Stryker for third. And it looks like he might actually get the position this time. I don't think. I think Dustin Davis tried making the move before, but uh, Striker got right back around him. And now Dustin's going to uh, handedly take that third place away. As Stephen Cologne in the 80 might even get around the 10 of Striker as well. Side by side there for fourth as they hit in the turn number one. We're about three laps away from the cycle of pit stops, and that's where things are really going to get interesting. Because what kind of strategy do you take? Do you undercut or do you overcut? In Joshua Harrison. He might not need to strategize too much. He's got to run to the inside of Baranowskis for the race lead. I'm going to say this right now, but if Harrison gets the lead here, this would almost be a repeat of Dover because Luke Rainey took the lead away from Ben Grorich right before the pit cycles happened. And as you said, we're uh, well, coming around this time. We're probably uh, two one two three laps away from the pit cycles happening. So if Harrison gets this lead... What's the chances that uh, he might uh, hold on for the victory of this race? I know it's e a little easier to pass here than it is at Dover, so maybe I'm just th thinking too much into it there. But uh, we'll see what still happens. Still holding that inside. But Baranowska's holding tough on the outside lane in this number 12 machine, but she might finally lose it here, and Dustin Davis is right here now. That battle brought all these guys in. Now Davis looking to take second away from Baranowskis, and he's going to be able to do it right there. So now Joshua Harrison has taken the race lead away here in Indianapolis. Next time by, he'll be halfway through the Steak and Shake 250. And Dustin Davis now up to second. Baron is kind of stuck in this outside lane because all those guys jammed up right behind her. Here comes Stephen Colon for third on the 12 machine. And then you got Justin Zidell and Elijah Gordon on the inside. Now Dustin Davis is all over the back bumper of Joshua Harrison. It's going to be interesting to see if either one of these guys peeks to the inside for that uh, pit stop a little bit earlier. Somebody is... I think out of the race. It's the 24 machine of Braden Perez. I saw a pit sign down, down the backstretch, and something happened to the 24 machine that we missed. So tough break for Harrison's teammate, Braden Perez, right there. 
But our first DNF of the day in the Steak and Shake 250 as we're halfway through Indianapolis. The most unluckiest guy I've ever seen in our competition, Braden Perez. Unfortunately, with another thing going wrong there, that is just... That's the epitome of how his 2021 has gone, I think. Just terrible break for him. So now you got a four-car breakaway with Harrison, Davis, Cologne, and Stryker. You may see someone peek in here. Nope, not yet. Top four all kind of stay out here. Baranowskis fell all the way back to now fifth. Sorry, sixth. She uh, got passed there by Justin Zidell. So she lost two more positions on that lap there. Elijah Gordon now running in the seventh position. Marty Johnson. Watch out for Marty. He's won here before in the Cup Series. As for the lead, Dustin Davis has taken it away. But Harrison might cross over here as Davis went a little wide through turn two. Some good racing here in Indianapolis in the Turkey Hill National Series. And Harrison might not let this 63 lead a lap. He's going to go back to the inside. It's going to be interesting, too, if Harrison dives down the pit road here. Well, it looks like Davis is going to get the jump on him headed out of turn three. But we're on lap 12 now. Will we see anybody peek down to the inside to get pit stops? Yes, we will. Looks ooh, like ooh, some ooh. guy's slowing up behind. But Dustin Davis is going to stay out. Harrison leads them down with Cologne and Stryker and Baranowskis. We'll have to see. That one extra lap could make a difference. The tire wear does come into effect here, and you're going to be going a little bit faster on fresh tires than you are on worn tires. So it's not like it is at Darlington or Dover, the past two racetracks we've gone to so far this season, but uh, that one lap could still make a difference for these guys here as they're down for their cycle of pit stops. Joshua Harrison, I imagine it's going to be a four-tire stop for all these guys here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Justin Davis holds on to the race lead right now in the number 63. As we'll follow with Joshua Harrison and see if he can beat these guys off. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a four-tire stop and fuel for everybody as it was expected here. Just past halfway at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And Cologne's coming out of his stall, Elijah Gordon. And here comes the rest of them. Dustin Davis now going to lead Marty Johnson. We've got around Justin Zidell, Roberto Crown Jr., and Landon Smith Jr. down the pit lane. And Declan Wellington Turner, I remember he started third for this race. He fell way, way back in this one. Uh, not a good day for that 66 machine. But Harrison's got some contact. Uh-oh. <laughs> Ethan Farley got in the Josh Williamson, the driver, there <laughs> on the back of the field. Yeah, honestly, if you were doing better, I don't think I'd let you uh, commentate, but I'm, I'm telling yeah, you, at honestly. 75, we've had... He, yeah, we've had a tough Honestly. season. That's my team, so we've, we've definitely had a rough season. Look at this. Harrison has pulled ahead there of Stephen Colon. The big question is, will he be able to beat Dustin Davis? Number 63 coming off the pit lane right here. Remember, Joey Hightower was involved in that accident. He's falling back a little bit. Marty Johnson's going to gain a lot of time right here. Whoa. And uh, now we're going to see where this number 48 is on the racetrack. He's just crossing the line right now. Ooh, that's going to be close. Just ahead of him right there is the 63 of Dustin Davis. They do not merge until the exit of turn two, however. Here comes Joshua Harrison in the 48. We're going to have to see. He will get around Dustin Davis, but it's going to be close. Davis will still have a shot at this race victory, no doubt about it, especially if Joey Hightower comes into play. And uh, if you remember Armory Digital a couple months ago, uh, we all know that he can definitely come into play for a race victory in one of these Turkey Hill National <laughs> Series races. He's had a good season, though. Um, had a great all-star race. He actually raced his way in through the open um, and had a great all-star race uh, in the Cup Series last weekend. So great to see that of him. But uh, Joshua Harrison has pulled out to a pretty significant lead. Now you got Cologne and Baranowskis who do have these warmer tires. They're, they're already up to speed. They're getting a bit of a run here at Dustin Davis. But it's only 1.2 seconds from Harrison to Davis. And it's six laps to go here in the Steak and Shake 250. I would be surprised if Davis and the gang did not chase down uh, Joshua Harrison there in the 48. They've got ample time, I would say, here in the final five and a half laps to get up there, especially with this sort of draft they've got going here, this sort of three-car tandem. Three cars is faster than one, even at a track like Indianapolis. You'd be surprised how much that comes into play. Is Baranaskis going to look to the inside of Cologne? and easily take that third position away from the 80. Yeah, Baranowska's got stuck in that outside lane before that cycle began, and she lost a lot of ground. She led the first nine laps of this race, but 
We're gonna have to see if she can close in. I think they are closing in on Harrison here. Five laps to go in the Steak and Shake 250. Next time by, it's the point of no return in this race. So since we had pit stops, the mile or the amount of laps under a caution is still four laps. So if they uh, they wreck here soon, that's that's gonna do it. And Harrison would definitely love to see that because Dustin Davis is coming fast, and you got to think he's got slightly fresher tires at this point that may affect how this 63 can catch up to this 48 machine. Absolutely something to watch out for. And, you know, I picked Dustin Davis to win this race. I'm not so sure Audra Baranaskis might not get up there and possibly win from the pole. She's worked her way back up to the front by virtue of the of how the pit cycle shaped out. And sitting there in the third position, once Davis and Harrison go side by side, if they do, I wouldn't be surprised if Audra Baranaskis might sneak in there and try to get around him. And here we go. Dustin Davis looking to the inside, headed into one. He gained a lot of time that last lap, but he's not going to be able to hold it quite yet. Last year, Carter Friesen won this race from the pole. Audra Baranaskis looking to do the same. It's happened before. It could happen two years in a row. Stephen Colon falling back just a little bit. Of Elijah Gordon there with Marty Johnson. A couple of sleepers for this one. They're about two seconds off. Especially if these guys end up getting side by side a little bit here, and they could get held up by Joey Hightower. But Dustin Davis is right there for the race lead, right behind the back bumper of Joshua Harrison. He's peeking to the inside, not going to quite have it yet. The best place to make a move is down the front stretch in the turn number one. They're going to have to get around Joey Hightower, though, and I'm wondering if they're going to try to get around him here, and Davis is probably going to let Harrison do the work for him. He can get that 25 in the outside lane, which he will. That will open the door for Davis and Baranowskis probably to get around this 25 machine. And Harrison able to pull away just a little bit there. As it's two and a half laps to go here at Indianapolis. Baranowskis is going to get held up there by Joey Hightower. And that's going to hold her back a little bit. And it may now be between Davis and Harrison for this race victory. Yeah, I think Audra Baranowskis and Steven Colon's races are over, at least as far as battling for the win goes, unless they can get around Joey Hightower there and maybe close back in on these guys if they start battling. But we're coming to two laps to go. They're running out of time if they want to have a shot here at this victory at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Oh, look at that run. Dustin Davis got Colon's going for... Oh, he's actually getting around Hightower. My apologies there. But Davis is right there now. Two laps to go in Indianapolis in the Steak and Shake 250. And to the inside for the race lead. Dustin Davis going to try to take it away from Joshua Harrison. That's exactly what Baranowskis wants to see because these guys going side by side is going to slow him down. Davis went a little bit wide there through the corner again. But Baranowskis might get a run on Harrison for second. Bought back in line for the draft for just a second. We'll see if she can make the move. Headed off into three. Doesn't look like it. Oh, yes, she will. Here she comes to the inside for the second position. And that's exactly what Dustin Davis, you know, that's what he wants to see. Absolutely. That's 63. I think he's the fastest car on the track. And doesn't have the fastest lap of the race. He had the sixth fastest lap of the race. But uh, he's definitely a really fast car. No doubt about it. Here we go. White flag in the air. In the Turkey Hill National Series at Indianapolis for Dustin Davis. Looking for his first career Napa fan win. Going to be starting ninth on Saturday in the Indianapolis 250. And I'm sure he'd love to get this race victory here today. That will give him a massive boost of confidence heading into that one. But it's not over yet. Joshua Harrison starting to reel him back in just a little bit. Baranowskis lost a lot of ground off the corner right there. But I just don't know if Harrison's going to be close enough for Davis. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a little too big of a gap there to uh, get Harrison back up to the backside of Dustin Davis. I believe when we come around turn three and four here, he's going to close in little more, little more, little more, but it's going to be too little, too late for Harrison or coming off the it. final corner. Or will, or will it? it? Oh boy, he's got to run. I don't know if he's going to have enough time. He's going to have to peek to the inside here, but he's going to have a shot. He's not going to do it. Dustin Davis, first career Napa fan win. Uh, he wins the Steak and Shake 250 in Indianapolis. And uh, this guy next to me is now two for two on predictions. <laughs> you predict Luke Rainey last time out at Dover. Now you got Dustin Davis, the winner of the Steak and Shake 250, his first career Napa fan win. And Heritage Motorsports finally gets their first win of the season as well. Been a while for these guys. It's been a tough season for this team. But Dustin Davis pulls it off here at the Brickyard in one of the biggest races of the season for the Turkey Hill National Series. Wow. 
what a race that was, man. A great drive out of Dustin Davis right there, and I think he's finally broken that stigma that he had from uh, last year's Body Armor Cup Series Daytona 500. <laughs> he, he definitely, that was a great drive from top to bottom, and Davis earned that race victory, no doubt about it. It was a close finish, though. Harrison had a shot, but just not enough to get to the inside of him right there. Take a look at the rest of the results right there. And Brain Perez with the gearbox issue. Tough break for him there in that 24 machine. A good thing for Perez, he is in the Indianapolis 250. Not everyone can say that, especially Collins and uh, Marty Johnson. But uh, take a look at the rest of the results. Keep it up there. Just a little bit longer for you guys to check it out. we got a lot of guys finished within a second of each other right back in there. Definitely a lot going on in the back of the field that we didn't catch. That's the thing about these short races. We don't have enough time to focus on the back of the field. And... Uh, not much going on uh, up front, but uh, there was actually a lot going on up front. What am I saying? But final thoughts on this one, Josh. And you know, Dustin Davis will be in that Indianapolis 250. Do you think that this win is going to help him out? Did he did he learn anything? It's a completely different car, but did he learn anything for the Indy 250 coming up on Saturday? Well, he definitely learned how to drive the track a little better, I think. But he's obviously going to be going much faster and have a lot more grip to work with in those Indy cars when it comes to be Indianapolis 250 time. But uh, definitely, he knows how to get up front and uh, win a race here at Indianapolis now. Of course, this was 20 laps as opposed to 80. If he could do this for 80 laps, who knows? He might have a shot at taking the Indianapolis 250. But excellent drive for Dustin Davis. Looking, to, looking forward to seeing what he can do in the Indy cars mm -hmm. it's gonna be interesting to see what it all unfold what all unfolds i should say this coming weekend here we're gonna take tomorrow off uh, we'll be back with some action uh, wednesday night with the coca-cola 600 qualifying session um and then thursday the turkey Hill national series is back from charlotte's only two days for well three days from now i should say um we're gonna be back in action for the cn rail 300 at the charlotte motor speedway that should be a great race coming up here uh, just a couple of days on AG Racing. Thank you guys so much for watching. Congratulations to Dustin Davis, your race winner here in the Turkey Hill National Series at Indianapolis. And we will see you guys just a couple of days here for the Turkey Hill National Series. The next race on AG Racing is another Turkey Hill National Series race. See you guys on Thursday. And, of course, the Indianapolis 250 this Saturday at noon Eastern time right here on AG Racing. On behalf of Josh Williamson, thank you guys so much for watching. Here are the points for the Turkey Hill National Series after 13 races, and I will see you guys later.